Don't you just hate it when your claymore breaks?
Well, I think I've got, I got him down to a good enough shape. Um, and yeah, it's good enough. They're not exactly the same and they're not perfectly smooth. They're not perfectly symmetrical. It's a little wider at the top than one, but hey, um, is what it is, mate. Now I am gonna stain them. The black stain, ebony, actually, and uh, oh, get a stir stick. Yeah. This needs more than just a stir stick. This has been sitting a while. Not sure how much that'll do, but we'll see. A bunch of chunks on the bottom anymore. Yeah. So, this is going to stain it all that dark. I'm not gonna paint it black, at least I don't think I'm gonna paint it black. I see a red door and I want to paint it black. Sorry, free associating again. Uh, it's um seem to be staining very dark and it's not who knows maybe I'll just put black sharpie on it just to be honest with you it's probably gonna make it better than this uh, put this on both and we'll see what happens Okay, getting ahead of myself, wanted to get this project finished. And uh, so, got some Gorilla, got, yeah, Gorilla Epoxy, two part. It's fast setting, five minutes, that'll be good. Uh, already pulled the a mixing stick out of it and there's like a little tray here in the packaging for mixing and you can just use, you know, any old little cup. Um, Got to go ahead and get it opened up. Oh, darn it. I'm supposed to have it vertical and let all the air get, which I had done, but then starting to do this video here, I moved it around and got it. There we go. Okay, this is to keep it vertical. I did read the instructions. Trick here is to not cut myself. Maybe you just pop it off. Of course, the trick is, the trick is how do you cut it safely, having it vertical. I'm gonna do it like that, it'll gouge into my thumb. We'll see, hopefully it won't. Things, plastics have a tendency to give way when you're cutting them. If you're putting some kind of pressure on them, then they get, all of a sudden they let go and you end up stabbing yourself. I think I'm going to end up doing here. Oh. Oh. It is open, and I'll be able to find that because that's the cap. And then it says to oh. get this here. I have to make 
a guess on how much I'm going to need. It's just supposed to get it uh, squirted where you have both flowing out evenly first. Well, that was a. Hopefully, that's an even amount. Put the cap back on. Now I got to get mixing because I've got five minutes. It's mixed for about 20 seconds. So. That'll do it. Great, already got crud on my hands. Well, do the underneath one first. I'm going to just use the mixer as a spreader too. I don't think there's Hopefully I've got enough here. I may not if I... We'll see. If I don't think I do, I'll mix up a little bit more. Yeah, I'm going to need more. back a little bit to get some air. Put that back in. Okay, now mix. too much. Okay. Let's see. Am I getting squeeze out? No, I'm not. So I need to put some more on there. Sides too. there.
Lawrence. That's not working. Sliding sideways. Pad fell off, but what the heck? There, I think. Just gonna have to wait and see how that goes. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna epoxy this. I guess you. This is called the pommel. I guess the whole thing is. I'm gonna epoxy it on, and I'm gonna have to figure out. Just have an idea of how much epoxy to make this. I've got to get all mixed up all in one batch. Uh, okay, I drilled this out from originally taking this, which you guys, I, I think I showed that part earlier. Anyway, I drilled this out earlier to be able to make room to epoxy the tang of the sword in. And I used a 13 30 second drill. I can see, you know, I didn't remember that, so I just pulled the drill out, and that's the right one. Uh, and it's uh, got was 1330 seconds it's about three and three quarters long and um, double check that oh there's a, actually there's a little bit more past where I drilled but that's good enough for now and this is tang is quarter inch square by three and three quarter also, which is actually the way I designed it. So, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and figure that volume out. Uh, the volume of this hole minus the volume of the tang, and then we'll see how much that adds up to. Okay, now I am capable of figuring it out, but I didn't want to, so I went and looked it up. I uh, found an online converter. Uh, there's the, after figuring out the volume and everything, which it ends up, there's about a, there's going to be about a quarter of an inch of space, a quarter of a cubic inch of space between the, uh, the tang and the hole here. So, uh, and that works out to a little bit less than a teaspoon. So I got to, but with uh, the extra hole down there and this, some of this bit up top, I'm going to, I'm going to mix up what I think looks like about a teaspoon, actually. I better check what a teaspoon looks like in here first. All right, cleaned it up here a little bit, <laughs> make it uh, well easier to work on. And uh, I, I, my rest of my shop is a mess. I keep cleaning it up and messing it up again. It's just part of having too many things to do. Uh, I'm gonna mix up more than one teaspoon, but here's one teaspoon, because I gotta make sure I have enough. And okay, that's uh, well, you're looking at the top, it's uh, it's a little bit you know on the bottom of this thing, so at least gives me an idea of how much I've got to mix up. That was a bit starting to come out of both. Oh, geez, the stuff just it squirts all of a sudden, now it's full. Okay. Okay. Is that no, that's not enough. So probably dry up before I get to use it again anyway, but hey, the heck we'll see. Um It's definitely more than the teaspoon that I put in there before. I mean, I think it is. It's because it's thick, and have to try to pour it down that hole. See how it goes. It's kind of my favorite saying of mine. See how it goes. Now let's see. Oh well, wow. it is actually pourable. Okay, I'm pouring it down there. Well, I think it's actually showing up on the screen too. Let's see, should have had something to. 
understand that that's not going to stand up there. Uh, my luck, and actually it's not my luck, it's probably, I mean, I designed it, it's probably going to come squirting out all over the place. Um, I'm going to... Stand this up in here. I'm not making marks on it, but at least get it to stay vertical. Get everything I can just in case I didn't measure it properly. Get it all in there. She knows how much goes down into the hollow spot below. Hopefully, that hollow spot is not huge. I'm assuming the bottom. <laughs> here is solid it may not be we'll see here goes well well it comes up most of the way there we go now Wait five minutes. There it is. It's not perfect, but I like it. Let's see, Let's see, Let's see how it shows up here. I don't think it's too bad. Yep, here I am all sweaty out in my hot workshop, sweatshop. I'm doing it myself, not being forced to, so I guess it's not a sweatshop, but might as well call it that because I'm sweating. And here it is. I think I can get it all in the shot. Well, I might be able to if I get back far enough, but two-handed sword, basically a claymore. Like I said, it's a knockoff of Aragorn's sword from Lord of the Rings. But now it's actually strong enough to be able to mess around with and not break because the sandal's pretty solid now. Thanks to all of you for coming along. God bless y'all. See you next time.